Tables are a great way to structure, manage, and edit large amounts of text. And in Storyline 360, they're super easy to create. Let's take a look. Let's begin by creating our first table from scratch in Storyline. So just go up to the Insert tab on the ribbon and click Table. Now you'll be prompted to choose the number of rows and columns for your table. So drag your mouse out over the grid to highlight the number of rows and columns you want. I'll go with a 5 by 6 then left click your mouse and your table will automatically appear on the slide. Now don't worry if you added too many rows or columns, you can always go back and insert and delete those later. There's a lot we can do in terms of formatting and customizing our table, but first let's populate the table with some actual data. So place your cursor in the top left cell and just begin typing. To navigate to the next cell, I can click my mouse in the cell, or I can use the tab key to quickly jump from cell to cell. You can also use your arrow keys to move around the table. I'll keep adding some data to the table and return when I'm finished. Now that my table data is populated, I can start formatting it. If you look up in the ribbon, you'll see we have a new toolbar called Table Tools, and there are two options. You have a Design tab and a Format tab. The Design tab is where I control how my table looks, and the Format tab is where I control my table's layout. But before I start customizing the look of the table, I should probably do something about the size of the table. You can see the table expanded a bit to accommodate all the text I just entered, but the table doesn't need to be this big. Now the quickest way to resize the columns and rows is to drag their boundary box up and down or left and right. What I like about this method is it's quick and it doesn't resize the overall table's size, but it might require some extra time for tweaking to get things evenly spaced. So another option for resizing the rows and columns is to specify a height and width value. So click inside a cell, then go up to Table Tools, Format tab, and in the cell size group, enter a value for the width. So I'll enter 225 for the first column's width, and now I'd like the remaining columns to be sized evenly. So I can click and drag across the four columns just to select them. And just like before, I'll go up to the cell size group and enter a value for the width. 80 should be enough here. Next, we can adjust the table's height by clicking the bottom boundary of the table and just dragging it up. And finally, we can size the rows evenly by making sure the table is selected and clicking distribute rows and that'll evenly space all of those rows. When we first created our table, Storyline made a couple of style choices for us. The first is the header row, which you see at the top of the table, and you can see it's a little darker and the font style has been bolded. Now the header row has a different styling than the other rows just to help it stand out. If you don't want the header row, you can disable it by selecting your table and going to the design tab, unchecking header row in the style options. Personally, I find the header rows helpful, so I'm going to re-enable that option. The other style option we have up here is whether to include banded rows in the table. Banded rows automatically apply a shading to every other row in your table. So if you're working with a lot of rows, a lot of data, it's a good idea to enable this option because it really helps with readability. You can quickly format your tables using one of the ready-made table styles. You notice how each style comes in three options with different border and outline styles. You can also customize the borders and outlines by selecting a cell or the entire table, then going up to Table Tools Design tab where you can choose a border style, border width, border color, and finally where to apply the borders. To completely remove all the borders for a selected cell or the entire table, you can click the borders drop down list and then just choose no borders. Now you can always add or remove rows and columns from your table. Just place your cursor in a cell and from the format tab, I can choose to insert rows above where my cursor is, below where my cursor is, or I can insert columns to the left or right of my cursor. And I can also choose to delete an entire row or column. All right, one last thing about tables real quick. Even though this table is a relatively simple one, it doesn't have has too many cells, it still can present a challenge for learners working with screen readers. That's why you may want to modify the tab order of your table cells. 
So by default, the tab order is read left to right and then top to bottom. But you can create your own tab order for slide content, including your tables. Just go up to the Home tab, select Tab Order, and here you can override the default tab order, right? So just click Create Custom Tab Order. So you can set the tab order for the table as a whole, right? So you can uh, move that up or down, right? And then you can also modify each of the uh, individual cells. Now the second area you'll want to modify is the alternate text used for each slide object. So you can see right now that these table cells don't have any alt text, but you can come in here and uh, give each of these alt text names a more meaningful name, which will make it a lot easier for uh, learners with the screen readers. All right, hopefully now you have a pretty good feel for how to customize and create tables in Storyline. Be sure to review and bookmark the Storyline 360 Adding Tables article to learn even more ways to work with tables, including importing PowerPoint tables, copying tables from Excel, customizing, and much more.